Hello, happy Sunday everybody. It's Delusion Dispeller. I'm going to try to continue my video from yesterday that I got interrupted with, or by the phone with, um, when I was making it. It was regarding the viewer that had asked me questions about codependency versus Stockholm Syndrome and trying to figure out what it all means. And also she mentioned something about abuse to animals by the narcissist, all of which I can address. I did talk about Stockholm Syndrome being that syndrome in which a person that is abused, a child or an adult child as I call them, um, adult that is kind of stunted in childhood because of abuse, um, any type of victim where the victimizer does good things as well as harming them so that the child or the adult or the person feels that um, they can defend the abuser because well after all yes they hit me but they bought me Barbie dolls or they hit me but they take me out for dinner sometimes too it's called Stockholm syndrome it's very commonly seen with sex abuse cases um, and also like pedophile cases that type of thing sadly um, it is a defense mechanism, a protective mechanism, so that um, I think what it is, is as human beings, we don't want to believe that we could have made the mistake of allowing ourselves to be abused, even though we really didn't allow it, we had no choice. Um, with a child, it's a defense mechanism, I believe, where the child does not know how to process what happened, and they're not sure how to feel, so sometimes they might feel shame. But if they can paint the abuser to look like, well, they weren't all that bad, sometimes they were good to me, um, that's what the Stockholm Syndrome involves. Now, codependency. Um, there was a gentleman in a class that I took in college recently, like a couple terms ago, that had a interesting thought about codependency. He does not believe it exists. He believes it is a term coined by people that wanted to slap a fancy label on something. Codependency is basically, if you want to just throw out the label entirely, what it is is that some people feel so indebted to other people or they happen to be the type of personality that loves to take care of others. And it can get out of hand. It can become to the point like for a child raised by a narcissist, they're so used to always having to be one step ahead of the narcissist that they're always used to doing things ahead of time and preparing things and making sure the narcissist is happy. Well, that can go over into codependency. And what that means is you have a need to take care of somebody to the extent that you neglect your own needs. I've seen this a lot. Like, it happens when you're caring for an elderly person sometimes. You might put your friends on the back burner. You might ignore your children's requests because you have to go help grandma or mom who's ailing and, you know, elderly and possibly passing on soon. And to an extent, that's normal. But if it's a long-term thing, and if it happens with more than one person, and it becomes a patterned way of living, it's not healthy. You cannot neglect yourself, your hygiene, your well-being, your, your hobbies, your interests, your friends at the expense um, of taking care of somebody else, basically. You know, you can't do one in lieu of the other. You have to have balance in your life, no matter what the situation is. <coughs> the next thing this person addressed in email with me was the fact that there was some narcissistic abuse towards pets, or maybe a lack of concern towards the pets. I have to say, personally, I have experienced this in my former marriage. Um, my ex-husband was raised by a sperm donor that um, decided that it was okay to torture and abuse animals. He would do horrendous things, some of which would be too gory to even mention here, and make my husband watch while my ex-husband watch while he was doing this and laughing about it and making fun of the animal as it died. Um, that's about as narcissistic and evil as you can get in my book, other than doing it to a human being. It's right up there, as far as I'm concerned. A living creature should not be harmed and laughed at while it's suffering. It's just evil and psychotic. Um, in fact, a lot of times, I often wonder if his sperm donor, quote-unquote, father, 
um, who was raised in an orphanage did not learn these things in the orphanage and learn um, a lack of empathy in his own life that he passed on to my ex-husband. Um, when we had pets, my ex-husband would often kick them off the bed physically, kick them across the room, pick them up and throw them. Um, when they were dying, he would say, oh, well, you got other ones, you know, that type of callous nature. And actually, that was done by the female narcissist in my life, too. I was on the phone holding a dying kitten in my hands that my ex-husband had supposedly um, accidentally stepped on crushed its ribs and the kitten did end up dying sadly it was only several days old and as the kitten was dying and I was crying over the phone to the narcissistic former mentor her reply was well you have other ones don't you I mean it's evil it's just plain evil I narcissistic is not even an apt word for that type of lack of value system and lack of care for another creature I, I don't even it's just disgusting to me, basically. Um, so yes, uh, narcissists often have no care for any type of living creature, let alone human beings. And it often does start with animals. I think that's also common with serial killers. It starts out with a helpless creature that cannot fend for itself and becomes the victim at the hands of a ruthless, evil-minded, probably demon-possessed creature we call a human being that's disturbed. Um, now many of these people were tortured and abused as children and that's why they turned out to torture and abuse pets. Obviously they are the victims too. It just all depends on the person. I, I can't give leeway to every single person that tortures and abuses an animal, a child, or a human being because regardless of what was done to them as children if they were able to get help and they're still like that, then there's a real problem in their psyche. And some people are just plain evil and there's nothing anybody's going to do to help them. Um, saving a God-formed God miracle. Anyways, I'm going to end this because this is kind of a morbid note and I don't like talking about negative, really gross stuff. Um, in the next video, I'll talk a little bit more to this person that wrote me. Please keep your comments and questions coming to me. Try to keep them kind of brief. Um, I do take the time to read, but honestly, I don't have a lot of time to read, and school is starting up again for me. I'll be taking psychopharmacology and group counseling this term, so that should be interesting. But um, I only have so much time in the day to spend reading emails, but I do read them, so keep them coming. Please just keep them limited and to the point so that I can address specific issues for you. You can write me 50 zillion of them if you want, but in each email, keep it down to like maybe a paragraph or two if you can. I appreciate that. God bless you. I love y'all. I pray wellness and health and good peace and joy come your way. God bless you. Bye.